That works. I'm going to use it. Listen, I'm trying to figure it out myself because I also had this huge issue with the spherot because they always associate the right is with the right brain, which is Hachma, which is your right brain. But yet, when you look at it on a piece of paper, Hachma is always Hachma is there. But wait a minute, it should be if I'm facing this way, it should be. No, but that's but I'm looking at over here. It's and exactly the same as when you're looking at a CT scan. The right side of the body, you're looking at it on the on, on your left. Okay. So, it's, so, you're, so you're looking at like looking at a person. The right side is on that side. It's on but it's on my left. But it's my left. My left is your right. Yes. Okay, well, then let's not get it because I'm going to lose myself, okay. okay? But let's get this that he says here. And these five divrot that are in the left uh, tablet are engraved and included the five that are on the left tablet. Vadai chamesh go chamesh. It's five within five. Vadai kaluni chamesha beto chamesha v'shol ha ketzad. How is this? How are they included, this one and with this one? So you have the first commandment, Anochi Hashem Elokecha, I am Hashem your God, that is in the right. This corresponds to Lo Tirtzach, don't murder, okay? Don't, like Retzach or Rotzach is murder. Okay, are you all there? You're reading ahead, right. that's okay. It's not easy to figure out even if you read it there, but that's okay. Yeah, that's true actually. No, right. I read it and I was quite... <laughs> All right, the kabel lo tzirzach. Okay, why? What's the connection? Should I ask you? No, let's read it. The teninan, train ilain bichlalan chada is klalilan. All of these, both of these statements are included. This one with this one. Why? That the one who kills deman tekatil azir de musa v'tsalma de mare. Somebody who kills a man, what is he doing? He's reducing the likeness. Of the image of, of 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 his of his maker, okay. In other words, to kill another human being who is in the image and likeness of God, that goes against this original commandment, does it? Does it? Think about it. Yes. I am Hashem, your God, who brought you out of Egypt. Where's the image written there? Well, it's 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 what you're doing is you're killing the. You're killing the image of what God made, which is uh, the image of God. So it's like a, a direct attempt of saying, you know, you're wrong, or I'm killing this, or I'm making it disappear, or uh, this is God's creation. But there's no mentioning of an image in the first commandment. Says, I am your God. I am Hashem, your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt. Great. Okay, I get that. But okay, not I am Hashem, your God, I got an image, baby, and it's looking real fine. No, that created you, sort of. It doesn't say that I created you. LMI, okay. Maybe it's implied. It doesn't say, it doesn't say, don't forget the first commandment, it didn't say I am Hashem who created heavens and the earth and created you. I am Hashem, your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, which really, basically, they all explain this as, I'm involved in your life. Hashgach prati. no one believed that God is involved in the world and things that go on in the world until... The going out of Egypt. Once God brought us out of Egypt, everybody said God made the world. Even people believed in God. Yeah, but he left. It's too low or too low here for him to be involved. I, when he brought us out of Egypt, he's involved. And he's involved in all personal lives. This is a Muna. Okay. But doesn't this, doesn't this clarify that Hashem made all of us in his image? When he brought us all out, he brought all the people that he created his image. Out but he him. created all of mankind in his image. All of mankind is in his image. This is a yud, this is a hay, this is a vav, and my two legs are a hay. Physically. Okay, and then you'll have the Jewish people, which are shin, dalid, and then yud, where the bris milah. Many uh, names of God we walk around with. Okay? Yeah. But <clears throat> But if somebody is attacking you, or you're in a war, and you, you're killing people. No, that, that you're, that's, it, that's a different thing. Completely different. Completely no. different. And I, I, like I alluded to before, <clears throat> th this exact text later on explains that commandment, that there's a hyphenization when it, with, by lo tirzach, or the, sorry, yeah, which means like there are circumstances where you have to kill. You have to. But the idea really is a blanket murder with, let's finish just to the end of this explanation, okay? But we got the idea here. 
Somebody who kills a person, what is he doing? He's reducing the likeness and form of his maker in the world. Because there's one less image of God in the world. Because it writes in the verse that man, God made man in his image. Right? I'm just reading the parish here. And through murder, pogain, he blemishes the anuchi. Shehu sod Adam Elyon, which is the secret of the cosmic man. He takes away from the cosmic man, meaning there's a cosmic man yeah, up there in the astral realms. Well, that's, uh, right? al demus. Let me just finish this one line. Uksiv al demus hakise demus kamari Adam. Behold, Adam ha Elyon hu kamari Adam atachto, and like it was in the vision of Yechezkel. Right, it was the pasuk in Yechezkel that he saw a throne of, you know, the throne of glory, and there was a man sitting on it. Okay. So, in other words, there's some kind of supernal image which is functions as a conduit for us in this world. That there has to be that image up there, and that image up there helps everything to exist down here, and everything down here affects everything up there. Everything up there, down here. It, Everything's affecting each other. We affect our small actions down here, affect things in the cosmic realm. But what it definitely says to me, do you want to say something? What did you want to say? What it de definitely says to me, when it says, Anochi Hashem Elokecha, it seems to be implying here. If a person were to murder, he's blemishing that commandment or that statement. He's reducing an image of God in the world. So it must be the first commandment, we'll call it a commandment loosely. I am Hashem, your God, is basically my image should be here. I'm the creator. Right. You're destroying something I created. What gives but it's in my image. It's like it's part of me that is there, and therefore my will is to be in this earth. My will is to exist. Is My presence should be available in this earth big time. Okay? Uh, another reason would be that uh, our soul which is in each one of us, is, is, is actually God's presence within us. Yes. Okay, so, so, when, to, so you were killing somebody, you are detaching this vehicle from the soul. The soul is going to go and attach again to where it came from. But you have, you have dissolved this. You community. sent the image of God back up to its source. Yes. When it's, when it's supposed to be here. 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 Because that's God's will. Right. Because it says, Let us create man that I shall insufflate life into him. Right? So, insufflate? I love that yeah. word. I never he's heard that word. He's, doesn't he? Cool. In the, when he's, in the last day of creation, it says, Let us create man. Who's he talking to? He's talking to his entire creation. It says, you're all going to participate in the creation of man, but I will insufflate life into you. That's so to the cause his, the, the person's soul to come up, he's removing that presence of God in the world. So there is perfect connection. It is a perfect connection, okay? But now, how could you word a great insight that we could put right here? Don't mess with you know. me. <laughs> Don't it's mess not with nice God. to fool Mother Nature. Well, I think it's just basically saying you're you know, killing God. Here's a question yeah. I have yeah. that here it's kids and saying human, but if you kill an animal, that's God's creature. It's also God's creature. It's a different commandment. But it's a different commandment. It's a different commandment. But image of God is big. Yeah. Because, you know, talking about a speaking individual thing, you know, that's big. People go kill animals, they might go to jail if they do it, like, you know, in a cruel way. But not murder. Murder, they go to jail, big time. Right? So it's a different level, completely. But how okay? about when Cain That's why the word kill is not... Okay. But that okay. was before the Ten Commandments. It doesn't matter. It was, one of the, it was still one of the first, one of the first... He had six commandments in the Garden of Eden. Yeah. Adam had six commandments, and one of them was that he brings it right here. I think they bring it right here, right next. It's one of the first six. Adam got the first six commandments of all what humanity. What page are you reading? Because I think I lost you. Oh, I'm sorry. Page. Let me... This is the, the one you copied, right? So, it's so here, I'm at... 
right there at the top of 513. Oh, okay. Rebbe said, okay, I got it. okay, Rebbe Chia said, so, so far I'm getting an insight that could, we could put in here, between here and here, which is, Don't mess with I want my presence. I, my presence must be here. My, every, my presence, my form, my image must be preserved down here. Must be down. Here. Okay. And we have a big, we have a different phrase that we call that. It's called dira, the tachtonim in Hebrew, which means a dwelling place below. I dwell below. I dwell. All right. Okay. Because if like so, it's in a okay. Like it. well, we'll stick that right here. I dwell. Now I'm. I don't have this in my head, guys. We're making it up. We're making it up. Okay. All right. Let's go on. You know, my dad asked me how good you are, and I says, well, whatever he doesn't know, he him then. He says, a good rabbi. <laughs> no. 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 I'm a... <laughs> I'm a Rebbe Chia. Says Rebbe Chia. Kasiv shafeich dam ha'adam ba'adam damo yishafeich. Boy, this phrase really is like kind of one of those... Uh, it's what do you call those words? The, the same word you read it backwards that means the same yeah, thing. What yeah. do they call those kind of words? Palindrome. palindrome? Yeah. This is a phrase which is a palindrome <laughs> phrase. Look at it. Shofeik is the first word. The next word is dumb, and the next word is ha'adam. And then the next word is ha'adam, Adam. And the next word is dumb, and then the last word is shofeik. Kind yeah. of a. Uh, in a reflexive kind of principle. But it translates as, it's, right? It means self-contained. <laughs> is that what it is? Yeah. He who sheds the blood of a human, by a human his blood shall be shed. Just, I don't know what that yeah. means. The okay. translation doesn't figure into my brain. You know, he who sheds the blood of a human, by a human his blood shall be shed, which meaning take him to court and kill him. He should be executed. Right, he who sheds the blood of a human, whoever sheds blood is considered as if he diminished the likeness and image above. Above. It's interesting because, in other words, everything we do down here affects things in the spiritual realm. In the upper realm. Right, so if we do something down here like that, we're affecting a huge, uh, has a, a, a very big cosmic effect. Okay? So, namely, he has not diminished this likeness, but rather another likeness. As implied by what it is written, he who sheds the blood of a human, but Adam, in the human. Meaning not human, but in the human. So let me read it in Hebrew. I think it might be clear. Okay? Somebody who sheds blood is as if he reduced the likeness and image of something above. Lo azar de Musa da, ela de Musa achara. What does that mean? It's lo mi eight rak zu ha de mus. It's only what it is. It is only that the one who spills blood of a, of a person, he is only reducing this likeness that is below. Ela de Musa adam he elyon. Lomi eight rakazu. He's not only reducing the likeness that is below; rather, he's really the likeness of Adam Elyon, of a upper form. Mashm dixiv it writes, "Zem mashmi mashi katov shafek dam ha adam ba adam tamo yishafek." What does that mean? Ba adam ila in the upper man. Mate hai pegi pegi musa mehahu dama de oshid. Right, he in the upper cosmic. Form, it reaches this blemish from the dam, from the blood of that person that he spilled. Therefore, his blood you should spill, which means, what's the reason? Because he blemishes something in the spiritual realm. Because, therefore, spilling the blood of a man, of a lower man, Hit, the blemish reaches to something in the cosmic realm which is very, very high. And therefore, that's why we say that the commandment of Lot Yertzach is dependent upon Anochi. Okay? Because when you kill a man, 
you're also affecting something in the spiritual realm. Do you have a question? Yeah. Is, it, is that one of the reasons why when you do a tahara, any blood that's in, like when you clean Gosh, the body, I, you, you I put do, in the... No. I don't know. No, I don't that's think so. because the soul is also in the blood, including animals, so it should not be left exposed. It should, yeah, it should, it has to go in the ground. That's why, that's why it has to be... The dead cut. body has to be buried in all the parts of it and everything because it has to go in the ground. That's, that's, that's the whole principle of the cashew, right? That, that we should no, that's different. Blood. That's different. But when you slaughter an animal no, no, and you have to cover have, the blood, yeah. this is but different. But that blood has to be covered as well. Not all bloods of slaughtered animals have to be covered. Okay? No. no. No, well, only we, chickens. Chickens, we, and, we and yeah, but and and but not cows. Not cows. No goats. No sheep. You don't have to do it. Only like a, what we call coyote, in general. Let's say like deer, chicken. You gotta go. go. Yeah, I really I gotta get eat and then I gotta. Go. You're gonna miss the five insights, man. I'm it's gonna send you to the astral Facebook. realm. Do you have this on Facebook? Facebook. I have Facebook. Hopefully it's working. Okay. All right. So that's number one. Number two, lo yelecha. Commandment number two, the kabel lo tinav. So no, don't have any other gods before me. This corresponds to do not commit adultery. What would be the corresponding idea here? Da mishaker bishma de kucha brihu, this rishim be bevarnash. Right. This person he lies. Right. In the name of the Holy One, blessed be He. That has the Israshim Bay that has in it impressed in a person. And there's a number of, of, of uh, sins, decrees, and punishments are, ha are dependent upon this. Okay? Because I guess what's happening here is it's a, it's a, it's a line. Huh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, for me, it just means simply cheating. Idolatry and cheating are the same thing. Um, There's a commitment to a relationship here. If you're committed to God, lo yelecha, do not have any other gods, because you're committed. And in a relationship, you're committed. There's a commitment. His wording is slightly different, okay? Here he wants to say that the adulterer Mishakeri lies in the name of the Holy One Blessed, which is impressed upon his circumcision. Okay? So he blemishes his circumcision. How many punishments and decrees? Bye bye. Oman de Mishakir Bahai Mishakir Bahai Be Malka. And somebody who's Meshakir in his bris, because he's is because of his lack of commitment, so it's as if he lies in the king. Dixi by Shem Bagdu. Ah, here we go. In Hashem they were was it? How do they translate it? Treacherous or what? What's the word? Betrayal. That's it. Betrayal. That's a big one. It, it makes perfect sense. Betrayal, okay? Right? Yes, it does. It makes perfect sense, okay? But... Makes perfect sense. Okay? Okay, so here's something which, like, ah, come on. I went like this, and I, and I read this, and I'm like, going, really? Okay? Um, come on. I went like this, and I read this, and I'm like, going, really? Okay? We're going to swallow it because what we say when, we, when it's called Kabbalah, which means Hayav Le Kabel, you just have to accept it, okay? So here we'll read it in the English for the sake of speed here, okay? So it says, Whoever betrays this betrays the king. As it is written, they betrayed Yudke Vavke because they bore alien children. Sure. Like it would, could happen with uh, adultery. And similarly, you shall not bow down to them and you shall not worship them. So one depends upon the other, okay? 536 says, the adulterer betrays the covenant of circumcision engraved in one's flesh and pictured as the divine name. Such betrayal is tantamount to denying God and worshipping false gods. So thus you shall not commit adultery depends upon you shall have no other gods before me. Okay? 
So he goes on in the note here, the verse you shall not bow down to them implies here that lying down with a foreign or forbidden woman is similar and tantamount to idol worship. Okay. But here I saw something different here. Where did I see it? Or maybe I saw it somewhere else. Here he wants to say, Rabbi, I have an insight. You're, what, what, let me just finish this paragraph because hold on to it. What happens if a person does adultery? They give, uh, they give, uh, they have mamzerim. <laughs> you have mamzerim, right? So therefore, oh, we'll see that later. So it's as if he is he is bowed down to idols. Because he thinks his enjoyment is coming from somewhere else. What's your insight? My insight is the union of men and women. When there is a true union of men and women through matrimony, God is present, right? Yes. Okay, well, picture this. When a man is born, God imprints one letter in the meatus of the penis to say you. Okay. That's why it's not a circle, it's a collapse like a you. Okay. And the introitus of a woman is that a vow. Okay. So now you have you, hey. <laughs> okay, you're okay. Lo we're losing our PG rating here. Well, okay. No, <laughs> but, but this is, this is, this is, if you, if, if you're out of this covenant, Oh, it makes sense. Listen, you it's wonderful. It but, but it should fit with the first commandment. But no, you're right. You're going to somewhere else. Okay? You're taking it somewhere else. Yeah, okay? Exactly. But the idea really, I would say here, in a nutshell, is the concept or the insight of commitment. In other words, when you're committed... Right. You're, when you're committed... The, the amazing thing you, is... When you have married, you're committed. If, if you... If, if you're now are uncommitted because you're looking for somewhere else, it's just as easy as saying, I, God, no, you could be right. anybody else. It's the same energy. Exactly. The exact same energy. Exactly. So the, so, so. <laughs> I'm going right, committed. I don't know if it's two T's or one. Is it? Two T's. Yes, yeah, two T's. Committed. Okay? Right. Total commitment, totally. Total commitment. Totally committed. Okay? Yeah. Let's go on. That's why I thought it makes perfect sense. Does. It fits. One and two are good. We're getting into sticky waters <laughs> now. Wait till we get to three. Okay? Lotisa. Lotisa, which means don't take Hashem's name in vain. This corresponds to don't steal. Okay. Uksiv, cholek. Cholek. This is in Mishle. Cholek im ganav sone nafsho. The one who divides... With the thief, he hates his soul. Makes perfect sense. Okay. <laughs> Hello. How does it make perfect sense? Okay. <laughs> Allah Yishma. When we didn't finish the rest of the Mishle. Allah Yishma Velo Yagid. Which means your shoes ringing, Max. Okay. No, that's not what it means. Right. A thief's accomplice. They say Hachalek. That's interesting. Cholek. Cholek al ganav. That's called an accomplice to a thief. Hates himself. And he hears the adjuration and does not testify. Ah. Allah yishma lo yagid. I think, Gary, is that your phone ringing? Oh, you just missed it. Afilu im yishma shemash bi'in oso shiagid mi ganav. Even if he would hear that they were making him swear that he should say who the thief is, right? Allah yishma velo yagid. He should say an oath. An oath should be heard. And he won't tell. Avalafi shechalakimo. But since that he was dividing with her or his accomplice, lo yagid. He doesn't say. Vayisa avona. Then he bears what? His sin. Vyavedet nafsho. And he destroys his soul. Meaning, it seems to be what it's saying here. But it's tied up only with a thief. In other words, an accomplice to a thief, what's he going to do? He's going to lie in court. I mean, basically, that's what it is. Bottom line. 
But come on. Come on, Rafif is going to do it. This is on the Ten Commandments here. This is like on the Luchot, man. Yeah. It's like you're not going to court every day. As a matter of fact, I run away from the court as much as possible. <laughs> I would dread even the thought of even going to court. Right. So, you know, let alone stealing. I mean, why is these, how do these get to be on the Ten Commandments? Right? How does this get to be in the Asarat Adibur? It's talking about a guy who steals. Of course, he's got an accomplice to a thief. Of course, he's going to lie in court. Okay, but that, come on. That doesn't, that doesn't, uh... No. No. The one who does not take the name of, of God seriously, and does it in vain, his accomplice is a thief. Because none of them are within the realm of the truth. Outside of truth. Outside of the truth. Stealing is, is outside of truth? Sure, because the guy that steals is never gonna tell the truth. He's only gonna Yeah, but he's an accomplice. he's a stealing is a, where is stealing outside of truth? He's stealing he steals the whole idea that he's away away from the truth. Anything that is away from the truth is, is a lie. We call it a lie. Or, or not facing the truth. And, so, and taking course, God's name in vain is... Uh, yeah, taking God's name in vain is like, uh, okay, you're, you know, it's reducing reducing something. If you take uh, God's name in vain, it's like invoking any other God's name. And that's on the second commandment. We shall not do that. Give me a second here. Okay, 29. I'm just going to look here and see you're if I can... We're going to cheat. You're not supposed to take Hashem's name in vain. So when you steal, you're not supposed to steal. So you're stealing Hashem's name by saying... For something... Vain. By saying Hashem's name in vain. Like you're yeah. stealing it's from Hashem. Stealing. How are you stealing? What are you stealing from Hashem? <clears throat> his glory. His, his... Yeah, his momentous... For any occasion, you're invoking the name of God for just anything. Okay. That, that you, you're stealing his kavod to the name. Okay. So to take Hashem's name in vain? It's like stealing his glory, his, you know, when should you bring up the name? If you're using it for every moment conversation, you're bringing God's name. In vain, it's like you're stealing. How does it fit into presence. now his words here? How do you see it fitting in what you're saying into his words at all? Well, is, is that accomplice? <laughs> you know, a so, thief's accomplice. Hate. Why does he bring this verse? Is this? He's like this verse is going to explain it all. A thief's accomplice hates himself. Yeah. He hears the adjuration and does not testify. Right. Surely one depends upon the other, for the thief is destined to swear right. falsely. Whoever does this, does that. Ah. In this, in this case, I see that the person that steals it's not enough. This is this is in the lower realm. A person that steals is the accomplice for the bigger. Oh, so you want to even move to this? Yeah, the accomplice. the accomplice is the accomplice for the biggest abara here, which is the name of God. Okay. One, Close. give me one. I listen. It all sounds good. <laughs> it's all uncharted territory. We can say anything. <laughs> this is like you know we're we're uh, yeah we're totally in uncharted territory here. So, Paul, what's your idea? Twenty. No, I'm thinking that one goes more with the next one with taking false witness. Just, right? Uh, Wouldn't you say that? Yeah, not using his name. You should switch it. Why don't you go up there to sign and talk to God? I think you should switch. <laughs> yeah, you sure that's the order? You sure that's Moses, the order? Moses, I think you write him down wrong. <laughs> <laughs> One second, I'm just trying to find it in here. 29, right. 27. Yes, you are. It is. Except that, they, well, it's still being false witness. If he's in court, he's being. 29. 27. One second. Let me just look here and see what it says here. <laughs> Shabbat. That also makes sense. Yeah. It's not even here. They gave me the wrong. You can make anything make sense. Well, but once it makes sense for you, yeah. then it becomes your reality, which is important. That means you manage to, uh, to bring the plane down to <laughs> Earth. 
Just accept what they say. It's not here. Okay, we'll have to find it later because I don't see it here where they quoted it. All right, let's go on. Zachor at Yom HaShabbat. Well, that's what you're supposed to give me right now. I think you said it. You said a magic word. The duck came down with a little card on it and had the word on it. I forgot what it was. You said it really good. You said Where's one your cigar word. Groucho? Yeah, right. Where was that word? You said a good. You said a right word about it. What? Uh, oh, you. No name in vain. Don't steal. What was it? I don't know. Uh, let's call it. You had a word. He said it great when you were explaining. I'm like, that's the word. But I didn't say it at the time. I didn't want to interrupt you. Should have written it right I didn't, away. I didn't want to interrupt you. But yes, we lost it. It's okay so to lose it. It'll come back. Yeah, yeah, right? We should go back there. And, I don't know. Yeah. No, don't take Hashem's name in vain. Stealing from Hashem. We have to have the inverse of it, about the stealing. You know, you're, you're, when you're saying Hashem's name in vain, what are you doing? Why is that stealing? Because you're taking away this, this grandiosity. You're making it a common. You're making something special. You're, you're, you're making it a, a common thing. You're bringing, you're bringing it down from... But its, stealing? Stealing has to do with stealing. Yeah, you're stealing... How are you yeah. stealing something? By because saying you're bringing it out of a place where it shouldn't be. Uh, no, that's not it. It's, it is, but it's that's not the word. I need the word. Kavod, Kavod. No, because we had like left other stuff like this one. Commitment. You said a great one, and I can't remember. We have to go retract. I'll have to go back okay. over it and listen. This is all on um, tape, right? Yeah, and I got it out here on here. Okay, tape. good. <laughs> but I don't know if it catches you. That's the thing. Let's You're the far away one. here. Okay. <laughs> we'll cat. We'll go back and we'll get it. Okay. Or somebody on Facebook will uh, go ahead yeah, and send it to me. Zachor et yom hashabbat lekabel lo sa'ane v'reche et shaker. Now, remember the Shabbos day. This corresponds to do not uh, bear false witness. Right? Dema Rebbe Yossi. Shabbat sa'adu ikre. This is kind of direct. Shabbos is called testimony. Oboi bar nash lezahada alha. And a, a, a person, a man, needs to give testimony on this. Because in, God, in six days, God made the heavens and the earth. Shabbat, right? And, and the Yom HaShvi'i, Shabbat, Shabbat, Klala, Dekula. And Shabbos really includes everything. Shabbos, we say, includes all of the six days of the week and all of the deeds that were done on them. Therefore, the one who's made on Shavisa Shabbat, the one, l'chein ha-me'id al shvisa Shabbat, the one who gives testimony on the sitting of the resting on Shabbat, he is testifying on the work of creation. So in other words, if you are a person who is not keeping Shabbat, it's called giving false testimony. To keep Shabbat is giving true testimony. Truth! That's what you said. You said something about truth. I'm sorry, we're going back. <laughs> I think you said something about taking a gentleman's name in vain. I don't know, maybe it's a that belongs here. But, um... Well, let's put it in the next one, and then we'll find out. Okay, fine. Nye. <laughs> Nye. Or, or, I thought you said something about truth here, and truth, truth stuck. Because you mentioned something about stealing is not truthful, and the name in vain is not truthful. But here it also fits more better, right? Okay, so let's go to the next one. More better. Yeah. What? Did I say more better? Yeah. Okay, fine. Amma Rebiosi, my dixiv. Am I here? Are we on the right page? Yes. Says Rebiosi, my dixiv. What does it mean to tin emet Yaakov? Give truth to Yaakov. Kamad atamart v'shamru b'nei Yisrael at the Shabbat. Just like what it says. And the children of Israel will keep the Shabbat. Uman asahid shikra. And the one who gives testimony, false testimony, he also is Meshachir B'Shabbos. He will lie in Shabbos. Because it is the true testimony. 
And the one who lies in Shabbat, he denies the entire uh, Torah. And because of this, this one is dependent upon this one. Does it make sense? Does it? Okay. Okay. Truth to Yaakov. The children of Israel should keep the Shabbos. Whoever else fault witness is false to the Shabbat, which is the testimony to the truth. Okay, so in other words, we're going to say truth fits here. Okay? Weiter. Okay, kaved et avicha lekavel lo tachmod eshet reecha. So honoring your father, this corresponds to do not desire the wife of your neighbor. Vama Rabbi Yitzchak. Rabbi Yitzchak says, kaved et avicha avicha mamash. This means really, literally, who is your father? Why does he have to say avicha mamash? Somebody who is certainly your father, you need to honor. Not somebody who is doubtful if he's your father. Okay. Somebody who is certainly your father. Because the one who desires the wife of his friend and he gives birth to a child. So then what happens? What happens that child who is a mamzer? He has to give honor to somebody who he thinks is his father, but really it's not his real father. It's nearly not his father. That's why it says, honor your father. It's kind of a very strange connection here. Okay, but let's read on. Lo tachmod base reicha. Don't desire the house of your neighbor or his field. Uksiv hacha al hadama asher Hashem Hashem elokecha no sein lach. And it writes over here on the land which Hashem your God gives you, the land which Hashem your God gives to you. Hahud yehiv lach that which He gave to you yehidi lach which should be yours. Below Tachmod Achara, you should not desire another Vada Ha Baha Talia. So the way I this was explained to me this, and it's the one thing why I went into this whole thing in the beginning, was because I heard a class somebody gave this, and he made a connection here that stuck to me till this day. Okay? Which is the ultimate insight. Okay? And the ultimate insight is honoring your mother and father, not covet, really it has to do with what we call Hakarat. Hatov, Hakaras Hatov, recognizing the good that God gives you. That means, really, because of the big question here, they say, if we say that this mitzvah is between man to God, how is honoring your mother and father a mitzvah between man to God? I can understand these are man to God. How is this one man to God? But yet it's on this tablet. And the idea really is that the Hinoch explains is that in order for you to come to really recognize the good of God, this might be hard for many people, you have to recognize the good your parents gave you. And now people are saying they will come from such abused backgrounds and, you know, abused. They have to still, folk, to, you have to like get rid of that all with all that garbage there still is some point where they have to recognize the good, they have to use their powers of perception and be able to, to recognize the good. Once they recognize the good, then they can recognize the good that God gives them and have a karasatov. Meaning, this is what God gave you. God gave you your parents. He puts you in there. It's all about a muna. Once again, muna is the string that ties all things together. Hashem gave you those parents for a reason. They were that way for a reason. In order to fully recognize the good that God gives you, you have to honor your parents. That's the stepping stone. That's why it's in a mitzvah between man to God. In other words, this gets you to recognizing the good. If you don't recognize the good, you start desiring other people's uh, stuff. Right, yeah. So, and muna is, is the last... I would word. say, well, it's recognizing the good. Could be a muna. Which one would you say? Let's vote. Okay. Oh, recognizing, recognizing the good, and in parentheses, emuna. <laughs> How about then? Uh, I'm gonna throw another word there for number three. <laughs> this How, one. Yeah. How this about, is this empty space. Yeah. Follow the rules. <laughs> How's that? Don't steal. Don't. Uh, no. This. Yeah. 
But they can always say about everything, follow the rules. Yeah, but this one. No, this know, is a. You know why? Um, that's interesting, there are five. Does that have any connection with the five books? Yes, it does. It says so right here. Oh, really? I think it says right, 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 right on. Right oh, next. No. Right? It says here, uh, the first invoke. Right? You're there? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The first the first five the first five include the five others. Consequently, from his right hand, a fiery law for them. For all became right. Therefore Torah was transmitted in five voices. Right, this therefore the Torah was transmitted in five voices. So they and then there's a note there that says right, it has to do with the uh, the five books of Moses. I read it somewhere in one of the notes. Okay, there you go. Rabbi Yehuda said all were five within five, corresponding to five books of the Torah. Booyah! Okay, we'll stop now, Kevin. Sure. Honoring father and mother, does that have anything to do with Shabbos and the Shekinah? It's maybe, all the Shekinah. Maybe you can make a connection. <laughs> but, uh, so, but that, now that's the only other one that gives us a, a reason, right? Honor the father and your mother so that your days in... In your oh, life, so your life, the days in your life are prolonged, or what is it called? Days yeah. so, uh, so, Say that again. What? One that yeah. Gives us a, a reason two, to do it. There's only two, and this is supposed to be the hardest of all of the commandments. Yeah. Why? Why? Because your your dad could make you do a lot of crap. 